Good afternoon. John 3.16 may be one of the best known verses in the Bible, but we might not know what it's really saying. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So, what do you have to do to have eternal life? Well, believe in God's Son, who of course is Jesus. That seems pretty clear. But that's worth taking an extra look at. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Belief these days typically means thinking that something is true, particularly if that something can't be proven one way or another. For example, do you believe that there's life on other planets? We really don't know. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the way most people read John 3.16. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? In other words, do you believe he existed? Do you believe he can bring eternal life? In other words, out of all of the possibilities, do you think it's most likely that Jesus can bring you salvation? But that is not what John 3.16 is about. It's not about whether or not you think Jesus Christ and his saving grace is real or not. And we get a hint to what it's really all about if we look at the Greek word that is used here in the original version of this passage. Remember, of course, that the New Testament was written in Greek. The word to believe in Greek is pisteo, which goes beyond merely considering something to be true. It means that not only do you consider that it is true, but that it is worthy of your trust. To believe, to pisteo, means you entrust yourself to Jesus in complete confidence. You might believe there's life on other planets, but you're not entrusting your life to that belief. If it turns out you're wrong, if somehow we find out someday that there is no life on other planets, the worst case scenario for you is that you'll be embarrassed about it. It's not as though your life is suddenly going to be thrown into turmoil because there's no aliens out there. But when John 3.16 speaks of believing in God's Son, there's so much more to it than that. It means entrusting your life to him. It means building your entire life around him. To believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God means living your life in such a way that if there is no salvation in Christ, you would be utterly undone. It's more like trusting that that bridge over a deep gorge is going to hold your weight. If you're wrong and the bridge gives way under you, you're lost. It's what Simon Peter did when he and the other disciples one night saw Jesus walking on the lake. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Peter got out of the boat and he walked on the water as he came toward Jesus. Peter trusted that if it actually was Jesus, that if Jesus was the one whom he believed, whom he trusted, whom he had confidence that he was, then Peter knew he could walk safely on the water if Jesus said he could. Now, unfortunately, Peter's confidence in Jesus lasted only a moment or two. It didn't take long until his courage gave way and he began to sink and Jesus had to come over and pick him up. Believing in Jesus, trusting in him, relying upon him, having confidence in him is more than simply thinking Jesus is real. It means being willing to walk across that bridge over the gorge. It means being willing to get out of that boat in the middle of the lake. It means being willing to take risks. It means dreaming big and counting on God to show up to fulfill that belief. This kind of belief, this trusting in Jesus, means going beyond what you're able to control, going beyond what you're able to manage, it means making plans that will only succeed if God is at work. Times have changed. It used to be the case that pretty much everyone believed that there was a God. The only question was what you believe about God and how much you are willing to trust in him. Today, the question, do you believe in God, has been watered down simply to mean, do you think he exists or not? 
But the faith that makes you a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ is more than mere intellectual assent to a proposition. And it is more than a half-hearted, yes, I know God's at work, but let's face it, we have to be practical. Let's plan things just in case he doesn't show up. <laughs> That's not the kind of faith that John 3.16 is talking about. How far are you willing to go in your reliance upon God? How far are you willing to place your confidence in Jesus? Are you ready to stake everything that you are upon him? That's what John 3.16 is all about. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, we are like Peter, sitting in the boat, wanting to be able to trust you completely with our lives. But so often, like Peter, our courage gives way and we become afraid and we start to wonder if we really can rely upon you, if we really can trust in you to come through for us as you promise you will. So Lord, increase our courage, increase our faith. Give us the willingness to step out boldly, to commit ourselves to things that are beyond what we can do, but are certainly within the realm of what we know you are able to do. Teach us, Lord, what belief means. Teach us what it means to trust you. Amen. Thanks for joining me. We'll talk again later.